Good morning, Periscope. Hey, Scopers, it's your girl, Nakia Young, on this beautiful Wednesday, June 15th, 2016. Um, but for those of you who are here we go. There you are. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Double tap my screen if you can hear me. Is that Meg? Hey, Meg. Good morning, lady. How are you? Got to chat soon. Um, yeah, so it is hump day. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you, thank you. Keep them coming. Um, and invite your followers to listen in. This is going to be a quick scope you guys notice my scopes are getting quicker and quicker um hey cuz hey and that is because naturally i have a newborn and he has been toying around with waking up for the past few minutes he's still asleep now but i don't know how much time we have um so let us get to it hey rodney good morning my love um before i get started I, of course, logged on to my computer and whatnot to prepare for the scope today and to announce that I was going live, all that fun stuff. Um, ah, <laughs> black girl blushing, black girl blushing. Um, but no, so the first story I see in my timeline is that apparently last night a, um, a two-year-old boy was literally snatched right from his parents at Disney World last night. Um, Disney World, not Disneyland. Where is Disney World? Orlando, Florida. So at this point, that's too many tragic incidents in Orlando, Florida. Too close together to be a coincidence. Um, I even, of course, read that before going to the Pulse nightclub, the shooter had planned his attack for Disney World. Um, the devil is just out of pocket. That's too That's too much demonic activity um, on a tragic level. This boy was snatched from his parents, right from in front of his parents in Disney World, by an alligator. By an alligator. So you just walking around Disney World, minding your business as a family. I don't know, maybe stop to take a selfie. Um, maybe just wandering around, you know, just having fun at Disney World. And an alligator, a whole alligator, comes up out the water or whatever, comes in front of your family, snatches your baby from you, and drags him into the water. That doesn't just happen. So, um, pray for Orlando. Um, yeah, I mean, that's something that I looked forward to doing with my son once he was old enough. We have family in Orlando um, that we would love to take him to visit. And where's the first place you want to take your kids when they're old enough to realize what it's about? Disney World, right? Disney World is the happiest place on earth. It's Disney World. Now you got to worry about alligators coming up and snatching your kids? Like, yeah, um, the devil is busy right now in this country, and we, the saints, got to get busier. Got to step up our intercession. This kind of stuff should not happen. The devil has really been going ham, and I'm fed up with it. Um, this is one of the things they don't prepare you for when you have kids, is that certain certain news stories will hit you harder when you become a parent, because... Your empathy for situations will be at a whole other level. Like, I'm going to stop talking about it because I don't want to start crying. Like, that really made me mad to wake up and see that this morning. And I just can't imagine what those parents are going through right now. Um, so please keep them in your prayers. Please keep the Pulse nightclub shooting victims in your prayers. Um, I did a whole article on that. Yes, we're praying for them, Christians. Yes, it was a gay bar, and we're Christian, and we're praying for them. I did a whole article on that. Please read it. And um, 
send it to your over-religious friends who think this is some kind of victory or God's judgment or something. No, those were human beings and they did not deserve to die that way, whether you agree with their lifestyle or not. Um, pray for the family of Christina Grimmie from The Voice, beautiful 22-year-old singer in Orlando on Friday of last week. Had her concert, sang beautifully, went to her product table to sign autographs and greet fans, and um, somebody just walked up and shot her for no reason at all. All of these three things happening in Orlando. Thank you, honey, for that link. Um, yes, you guys can go there to check out my article on the Orlando situation. There's been so many Orlando situations at this point, I can't even do an article on everyone. Um, and of course, I live in Chicago, where there's been a ramp up of demonic activity for years with all of these crazy shootings. And um, those are mass shootings to me. I mean, they've happened so much that people have accepted it as normal and it's not even being reported on as much. But it's still a problem here as well. So um, this next election is really important, y'all. Another scope for another day. But I thought that I would get those announcements slash prayer requests out there. Um, so for those of you who are in your prayer time today. So now we're going to talk about real quick our topic, three lessons we can learn from Draymond Green. Three lessons we can learn from Draymond Green. All right. So Draymond Green plays for the Golden State Warriors. Woo woo, dub nation. Um, you guys know who I'm rooting for in the finals. So double tap your screen if you are a basketball fan and if you are just absolutely elated at the NBA finals, like, yes. Um, I'm rooting for Steph Curry because Team Jesus. That's not to say that nobody on the Cavaliers believes in God. I'm not saying that. I don't know what their walk is, but I um, am a huge fan of Steph Curry because he makes his walk public and ain't no shame in his game. So I'm really rooting for the Warriors to pull it off. So Draymond Green is on this team, and he is an exceptional defender. Um, yeah, Steph is legitimately the best player in the NBA right now. Yeah, hands down. Um, the good thing about the Golden State Warriors is they have a complete team, right? Everyone does their part. It's not like Steph is really good and... He's got these teammates, and they're kind of okay. Like, they have cats coming off the bench, like, going crazy. So, I mean, they haven't had their record-breaking season, um, and they're not the defending champs for no reason. So, last week, um, in Game 4, LeBron and um, Draymond Green got tangled up. Y'all saw it, right? In my mind... And in the mind of everybody else with two eyes, LeBron James started that entire incident. Okay? He did. He got tangled up with Draymond on a play, flung him to the ground, and then proceeded to step over him in a manner so that his private parts rubbed across Draymond Green's head. It was out of control. Yeah. LeBron was not cool for that. So, of course, naturally, what happens next? Draymond Green gets up off the ground. Well, he flailed his arms while he was on the ground. Um, when, and when he flailed his arm, his arm hit LeBron James in the nuts. I personally don't think that he was hit LeBron in the nuts. I think he just flung his arms, and that's where his hands landed, because when he flung his arms, LeBron was in the middle of stepping over his head. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, his nuts shouldn't have been nowhere near Draymond Green's body for that to even happen. However, um, they get up, they get ready, they have some words, they're about to go at it, they get separated from the team, it's ruled a, a double technical... Um, they each shoot their free throws, life moves on, right? Wrong. So the NBA ruled that Draymond Green would be suspended for game five for a flagrant one. Now the problem with this is in their last series when they played my home team, the Go um, Oklahoma City Thunder, Draymond Green had kicked one of their players in the nuts. This was not, now I believe this one was intentional. 
the thing with LeBron was not intentional. This incident in Oklahoma City, Draymond was a whole fool for that. Like, I hope that that Adams dude on the Thunder can have kids in the future because that was out of control. Um, And during these finals, there have been incidents of Draymond Green getting flagrant fouls um, that have led up to this. Now, strangely enough, the NBA didn't see fit to suspend him for any of those incidents. They didn't, you know, they just kind of gave him his flagrant foul, gave him his fine, you know. Um, But in the biggest game, in an elimination game where, you know, Golden State wins this game, they hoist the trophy, it's over, they got the ship. This game right here, the NBA decides for for the one time that Draymond did not commit a flagrant to assess him a a flagrant. Yeah, I have my thoughts on that. Um, very interesting because they win with that. They get to extend the series, make more money, blah, 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 blah. So what can we learn from this incident? One, skills are great. Character is greater. Okay. Um, you can be extremely skilled and talented at what you do. And you can have skills that everyone rants and raves about. Draymond Green is the bomb, okay? He was, you know, there was a ton of talk about him being named NBA Finals MVP MVP because he has been out here balling his butt off, right? And then he gets suspended during the finals, right? So I don't even know if that's a possibility for him anymore. Unless he comes out tomorrow night in game six and just absolutely goes crazy, which I think he's about to do. I believe that the Warriors are about to win game six in Cleveland. Um, But that's neither here nor there. It can't all just be about skill. Character is greater, right? You got to have the character. Um, Because the devil loves people with skill and no character. I'll say that again. The devil absolutely loves people with skill and no character. Those are his favorite people. His favorite people right um number two integrity i'm just gonna leave that right there integrity right is right and wrong is wrong okay you can do something and think you're getting away with it um but that's always going to catch up to you and that's typically going to catch up to you at the most absolute wrong most inopportune time imaginable so all these flagrants and temper flare-ups that Draymond had been having um and kicking people in the nuts and getting slaps on the wrist for it um yeah that all caught up to him at the worst possible time number three lesson we can learn from Draymond Green in this whole suspension incident it's not all about you. Hey, Ann, it's not all about you, right? Um, so, and we talked about this on another scope. I believe it was last week's scope. We talked about the importance of um, um, being unbothered. It was a co- couple of scopes ago, so you can feel free to go back and check that one out. Um, I forgot to put the save hashtag in this scope. Darn it. So this one will not be saved. This one right here will only be up for 24 hours. But you can go back and check out the Unbothered Scope. That was a couple of weeks, either last week or week before last. Um, This is why it's so important for us to strive daily to live that unbothered life. Um, Because it's not all about you. In that moment, Draymond felt disrespected. He was extremely disrespected. Um, Oh, really? Oh, good. Okay, thank you, babe. Good, good, good. Um, So, yeah, he was extremely disrespected in that moment. And so he had to jump up off the ground and defend his manhood because ain't nobody going to knock me to the ground and step over my head. And now I'm going to have to let them know about themselves. You know, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I, 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 I. Well, guess what, Draymond? It wasn't all about you in that moment. 
your decision to defend your manhood, to demand respect, cost your team, at least at that moment, the championship. Because they really could have used your help in Game 5. They really could have used your help in Game 5. Did I just say, yes, they really, the Warriors really could have used your help, Draymond, in Game 5. There was an assignment, a greater assignment, a bigger picture, if you will, at stake. There is always a bigger picture at stake. Um, we have to keep that in mind that these attacks from the devil are not just about stopping us from reaching our destiny. Um, that's the short end. There's a greater picture at stake as well. <clears throat> that comes into play when we're not in our position. When we don't do our assignment, we're not where we're supposed to be. It doesn't just affect our lives and our lives only. Draymond Green not being where he was supposed to be in that game did not just affect him. It affected everybody else on his team. Um, for Cleveland to win three in a row, I believe, is highly unlikely with this Warriors team, but let's just say they did. Let's just say the Warriors lose the next two games as well, and the Cleveland Cavaliers end up coming back from a 3-1 deficit, which has never happened in the NBA Finals, and winning the championship. How badly do you think Draymond Green is going to feel? Right? Because all they need is one game, and they were at home on their home court in game five. This next game is in Cleveland, right? Yes, the attacks against us are about more than just us. Absolutely. We have to keep that in mind. We have to keep that in mind. There is always a bigger picture. Always. Right? So, um, the opportunity to be offended, um, to take the bait, the bait of Satan, um, great book by John Bevere, if you will, um, about offense, all about offense. That opportunity presents us daily. It's presented to us daily, right? We can't take the bait. Um, I believe LeBron deliberately instigated that fight because it was a desperation move on his part. Like, they were getting their butts handed to them. And he was like, shoot, I got to do something, right? And at this point, everybody in the NBA knew, you know, and the people watching knew Draymond's situation, knew he was one flagrant foul away from being suspended. It was just like, they was just like, okay, Draymond, that's too many incidents. You get one more flagrant, you're going to be receiving a one-game suspension. So if you a team and you getting your butt kicked by Draymond Green and his team, and you know he got anger management issues, what's the first thing you're going to do on purpose? Piss him off, right? Yeah. So you can get him that suspension because, I mean, gosh, we got to do something. We're about to get eliminated here. My season is on the line. Yeah. So those are my three lessons we can learn from Draymond Green. One, skills are great. Character is greater. Number two, integrity. Do what's right because it's right, right? You may think you're getting away with something, but God sees everything. It's going to catch up to you. Trust me, boo-boo. It's going to catch up to you, and this ain't what you want, right? Lesson number three, it's not all about you. It's not all about you. Um, the attacks on your life um, to get you out of place, not where you're supposed to be, you know, when we're out of our destiny or we're out of alignment with God's will for our lives, it doesn't just affect us. There's a greater picture at play and we have to keep that in mind. So strive to walk in love daily. Um, like we talked about Ephesians 6, 12, we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, right? There's greater principalities and powers at work. Um, but greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. I have to throw that in there. Um, we're the winning team, but that doesn't mean we don't have to do our part in order to win. 
yes, we have to operate on a higher level. A higher level. I believe the future is extremely bright for Draymond Green. He's a great player. Any team would be lucky to have him. When he's on that court, LeBron James does not go out for 41 points. He just doesn't. Nobody can guard him like Draymond. Like, it just ain't happening. He is a crazy defender. Like, he's the bomb. But, um, you know, he has to shed this bad boy reputation that he's got now. He's got to get his... You know, he's a really passionate player, you know. Um, and that's cool to have passion and, and winning is really important to him. But it can't come by any means necessary to where you just out here playing all wild and you have that reputation in the league. And so... Um, yeah, he's going to have to get that in check. And we all have something. I want you to take some self-inventory and think about what your something is. Because the devil has a file on on us, you know, and he knows what pushes our buttons. And, and those are the things that he goes after. Um, and so if you've been facing an unusual amount of... Um, people just trying you right and you didn't had to do the 70 times 7 forgiveness thing way more than usual stop and think about what that's about because it's not just about you stop and think about the bigger picture at stake and um god is trying to do something great in your life and the devil knows it and he's trying to get you off your square with offense don't take the bait I'm not telling y'all something I heard. I'm telling y'all something I know, right? That I'm in the process of walking out right now. <laughs> All right, so um, that's my scope. That's my hump day help. You guys, please share this scope with somebody. Um, I know it's kind of humorous because we're talking about basketball, but there's some real life lessons that can be learned from this. Um, so yeah, I want you guys to have an awesome week. You are almost there. The weekend is almost here. And, um, yeah, that's my two cents for Hump Day Help. Thank you all so much for tuning in. God bless you. Peace out.